hey everyone and welcome to another video and now we'll be starting off with this chapter formally which is this chapter of gravitation right so we uh, last time we talked about where we could probably find applications of this of gravitational fields everything related to gravity gravitational forces and whatnot but obviously before the formally begin, uh, beginning our discussion we need to lay down some ground rules before talking about very advanced concepts so in this video we'll be talking about gravitational fields lines and gravitational field strengths now one important disclaimer for you before beginning our discussion on this term here remember that in this chapter like any other chapter there's a lot of learning but there's also a lot of unlearning involved right so a lot of the things that you might have thought to be correct you'll find out that it's actually the opposite which is true so now let's start with this chapter so the idea is this and we mentioned this briefly when we were talking about the applications of circular motion there was talking about this idea that when we are talking about planets or any other celestial body in orbit right so if you're talking about planets in orbit the centripetal force it's called that FC is provided by the gravitational force of attraction right and I also told you guys there that I intentionally did not use the word weight because weight is kind of like a word which is uh, reserved for what any object feels when it's on the earth so instead we use this word the gravitational force of attraction and there I also briefly mentioned this fact and this is what we'll be building upon in this video that masses right large or small all masses attract other masses right so that isn't just restricted to objects like the earth and us even us as a body which has mass can attract other masses so all masses apply forces on other masses and this force is attractive right so a mass can only attract another mass you would never see a, a mass repelling another mass right so for example unlike electric forces or magnetic forces and we'll study this later in our A2 syllabus those can be repulsive but masses will only ever attract other masses so when any mass is being attracted by another mass and that is what we will always see unless we are in very deep space and objects are just floating and just going uh, in some direction forever we'll say that masses are under the effect of a gravitational field right so what really is a gravitational field so this is a pretty simple definition and this this is uh, just something you can think of as us just laying some basic ground rules and just defining some terms so a gravitational field is really just a region or a space in which a mass experiences a force right now we know that we have weight right so that weight is really that force that the earth exerts on us so how I would put it into technical terms is that I would say that we are in the gravitational field of the earth which is why the earth is applying a force on us which we call the weight so let me just write this here that the gravitational force exerted by earth on anything is what we call in layman terms the weight of an object right and this is going to be an important idea that we'll be referring to in the future as well so just keeping in mind what we just talked about which is that any region or space in which a mass experiences a force is a gravitational field and now the idea that follows is that all masses have gravitational fields set up around them right so us as humans or an object as large as a planet all of these are going to have some gravitational fields so gravitational fields are 
are set up around all masses. But why is that even though we have gravitational fields set up around ourselves and the earth but we cannot attract another mass but something as large as a planet can. Right? So there's this idea that maybe there is some difference between us and something as large as a planet which makes us not be able to attract other masses whereas the planet can attract other masses. So there is some idea of some intensity or some strength that is also associated with gravitational fields, right? So some gravitational fields like the Earth could be stronger, which is why they attract a lot of masses, and ours would be a bit weaker, which is why we cannot attract masses. So now comes into the picture another term, which is called the gravitational field strength. And this is something that we know very well. If I just draw the symbol for you, so this is the gravitational field strength which we usually denote uh, by small g and we know that on the surface of the earth this is 9.81 newton per kg. All of AS we have used this value in our calculations. So later once we also talk about this uh, term in a lot more detail we can also calculate what would be the gravitational field strength uh, that would be set up by the gravitational field strength that would be associated with an average human being but that will be something that we'll be doing in the next couple of lectures. So now to formally define what gravitational field strength really is this is the force exerted per unit mass and you can also see this from the unit right Newton per kg so force exerted per unit mass on an object in the gravitational field. So if I just write this in terms of a formula, so I can say that the gravitational field strength small g is the force acting, right? So now we'll be uh, we'll not continue with the usage of the word uh, of the word weight. We'll rather be using the word force. So the force exerted per unit mass. Alright, so now we'll also be throwing Newton into the mix here and what would happen if we apply Newton's second law to this picture right here. So if I talk about this in terms of F equals to MA, right, which is Newton's second law. So I know that the force which is acting is the gravitational force of attraction. So if we have a gravitational if we have a force of g exerted per unit mass then for any mass m the force exerted would be m multiplied by g pretty straightforward and this would be equal to the mass times acceleration from here on we can make a the subject of the equation which is the acceleration that would be mg upon m and obviously the m's cancel out and this is just equal to g so this is also something that we know so this is just a refresher up till now we also know that g is also the acceleration so previously we used to refer to g either as the gravitational field strength or the more common one was that we used to call g the acceleration due to gravity right so we can also call this the acceleration due to gravity Now another important thing to understand here is that we know A, the acceleration, as a quantity is a vector. So that means that G, the gravitational field strength, is also a vector quantity. Right? So if we talk about the Earth, for example, so we know that small g is a vector quantity. And the direction would be towards the center of the Earth. Directed towards... center of the earth or for example any large uh, object we're talking about so it could also be the sun or the moon right so it's directed towards the center of that and the center this uh, word will be emphasizing a lot in the next lecture so now we'll be talking about just a few more concepts just to keep it short and sweet for the day 
So let's say that this is our planet Earth and let's say we have we have a pineapple we ha uh, which has mass 1 kg right so if the mass is 1 kg then what the formula above told us that this would have a force of 9.8 newton which would be exerted by the earth on this pineapple right 9.8 newton per kg means that on a 1 kg object you would have a 9.8 newton force acting but here you must also keep in mind newton's third law which is this that if this applies if the earth applies a force of 9.8 newton on the pineapple then this pineapple would also apply a force of 9.8 newton on the earth but now it's pretty obvious to understand that the mass of the earth is much greater than the mass of one singular pineapple so which one is more likely to move it's obviously the pineapple so the gravitational forces on both objects are according to Newton's third law right the action reaction pair so you have the same magnitude of forces on both the objects but the directions are opposite right so the directions are opposite and the same magnitude of force but acting on different bodies now just one last concept before we call it a day here so let me just redraw that earth so this is what the earth looks like and I hope that no flat earthers are watching this video because now what I'm about to say might infuriate them so if we have this pineapple which would be dropped then it would fall like this towards the earth or for example if it was in a position like this it would fall like this towards the earth or in a position like this it would still go towards the center of the earth and we talked about this when we were talking about the gravitational field strength that it's a vector quantity and it applies forces on objects towards the center right an object in this position would also be pulled towards the center so now we also have something else to quantify those uh, the direction of that force because we talked about that and now we also need to talk about uh, how that force would act what would be the direction of that force and for that we use something called gravitational field lines right so gravitational field lines and this is uh, sometimes asked for a few marks in your exam paper as well so the gravitational field lines basically what they do is they show the direction of forces the direction of gravitational force on an object in the gravitational field right how does the force act let's just get rid of this guy now so the idea is this that the earth and any other spherical object has something that we call a radial field and why the field is like this will soon be apparent when we talk about Newton's law of gravitation in the next lecture so the idea is that the field lines are basically shaped like the spokes of a wheel so just going on with what we were talking about this is how a mass placed at this position would move this is how a mass placed at another position would move or a mass placed here or another mass placed here and this is how these masses would move towards the earth right so these are pointing inwards towards the center of the earth right and this is why all of these field lines are going to be perpendicular to the earth at any point right so right to the earth all of these would be perpendicular so you can see that the spacing between the field lines are less along for example this circle rather than this one so another idea that you need to know and this is something that you would be expected to show if you were ever asked to draw some field lines so the idea is that the relative spacing of field lines of field lines show the strength of the field in this case we're talking about the gravitational fields obviously so it's show the strength of the gravitational field 
so nearer to the planet the field lines are closer together right so the gravitational field strength is uh, greater here rather than at a greater distance where the field lines spread out which is why uh, which is how this diagram shows that the gravitational field strength falls off at distance objects which are further away will experience a smaller force by the earth now this view of the planet that we were taking was obviously very macroscopic right on the larger scheme of things we saw that the gravitational field is radial right but what if we take a zoomed in view right uh, with respect to our size as humans uh, with respect to the universe what if we take a more zoomed in view so now let's say that if we just focus on this small portion of the earth how would things look like how would the field look like so it's basically that we know that the arrows would be directed towards the center but now think of it as zooming in a lot on this diagram and just on this portion let me just move this down here just for convenience and now if we talk about this you can imagine three more arrows just like this but pointed downwards exactly in the same way right so when we zoom into a very small portion of the earth basically what we're doing is we're talking about distances very small compared to the size of the earth itself right so we're talking about very small heights above the ground so as far as we are concerned uh, with respect to the size of the humans the gravitational field lines the gravitational field strength is uniform right all the lines are pointing downwards and they have the same spacing between them at least that's what I've tried to draw and that shows that the magnetic field strength uh, uh, the gravitational field strength remains the same right so the gravitational field strength is not changing here this is what we call a uniform field so uniform field is shown by constant spacing of field lines of parallel field lines would be better right so on a much larger scale the the gravitational field of the earth is radial but if we zoom into a very small portion if you're talking about very small distances above uh, above the surface of the earth the field the gravitational field is uniform so the field and by field i mean the gravitational field is radial over very large distances but uniform over small distances and this large and small is obviously relative to the size of the earth but uniform over small distances so quite a lot to unpack in this very first video here so let's go through all of these step by step so the first idea that we talked about was that the gravitational field is a region or you can also use the word space where mass experiences a force and this idea of fields will be used extensively in A2 next we talk, uh, talked about the idea of the gravitational field strength right so that's the force which is uh, which is exerted per unit mass right and that's what this formula is also showing G equals F upon M and we also started this link uh, with Newton's second law so this can also be called the acceleration due to gravity keep in mind that gravitational field strength is a vector quantity directed towards the center of that large object which in our video we took to be the earth almost forgot this all masses attract other masses according to Newton's third law so what does Newton's third law say it says that the forces are the same opposite in direction and also acting on different objects then the last few concepts the gravitational field lines show the direction of force on masses in a field right so it just shows the direction of the force but if you have multiple field lines that you can also see the magnitude of the force this is the next point that the relative spacing of the field lines show the strength 
of the gravitational field right so the closer the field lines this means the gravitational field strength is stronger and vice versa in the next couple of videos we'll be taking on a more numerical approach as we'll be deriving formula and working with a lot of those so see you there